Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to the STI Suomi Torah International Shabbat Meeting. Today we have Chris from the scattering on the panel and the Torah portion is a double portion. They are Shukat and Balak. The stage is yours. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, well, let us let us start off in prayer. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you that it is truth and righteousness. We thank you, Father, that you um, deal with us uh, throughout, through in your word, uh, throughout this meeting, uh, the truth that we um, that you want to bless us with. Thank you that you've given us the ruach emes, uh, which leads us into truth and righteousness. For your name's sake, Father, we worship you. We give you praise and glory, and we thank you for this blessing on your Shabbat that you have chosen us to dwell with you in this Shabbat, and that we are, Shabbat, we are having this Sabbath with you. So thank you, Father, that you bless us in this word and in this, in this blessing. In the name of Yahusha HaMashiach. Amen. So today's reading is from uh, Berimba or Numbers 19, and it goes through to... Uh, 25 and verse 9. So um, let us continue and we will then um, uh, take it as it comes. Um, and Yahweh spoken to Moshe and unto El Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the Torah which Yahweh has commanded, saying, Speaking to the children of Yashirel, that they bring you a red heifer without spot wherein there is no blemish, and upon where there is never come a yoke. And he give her unto Eleazar the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp, and one shall slay her before his face. And Eleazar the priest shall take of her blood with the finger and sprinkle it of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the assembly seven times. And one shall burn it, the red heifer in his sight, and her skin, and her flesh, and her blood. With her dung shall he burn, and the priest shall take a cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. Interesting that the heifer, it's the first time that we see a female animal. Um, uh, being being slain and and being burnt. Um, so please, if, if anybody's got something to add, just uh, just raise your hand. It would be great. Um, and then the cedar wood hyssop and scarlet, which which reminds me of of Yahusha, right? It reminds me of the cross. Uh, if I think of that. And the priest shall wash his clothes. And he shall bathe his flesh in water. And afterward he shall be coming to the camp, and the priest shall be unclean until the evening. And he that burns her shall wash his clothes in water, and bathe his flesh in water, and shall be unclean until evening. And the man that is clean, that is clean, shall gather up at the ashes of the heifer, and lay them out without the camp in a clean place. And it shall be kept for assembly, of the children of Yashorel for a water of separation, for it is a purification for sin. And he that gathers is the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the evening. And it shall be unto the children of Yashorel and unto the stranger that sojourns among them a statute forever. That he that touches the dead body of a man shall be unclean seven days, and he shall purify himself with it on the third day and on the seventh day, and he shall be clean. But if he purify not himself on the third day, then the seventh day he shall not be clean. Whosoever touches the dead, the, the sorry, the, the dead body of any man that is dead and purifies not himself, <clears throat> defiles at the tabernacle of Yahweh, and that soul shall be cut off from Yasharel, because the water of separation was not sprinkled upon him, 
he shall be unclean, and his uncleanness yet upon him. This is the Torah. When a man dies in a tent, all that come into the tent and all that is in the tent shall be unclean seven days. And every open vessel which is no covering bound upon it is unclean. And whosoever touches one of it is slain with a sword in the open fields or a dead body or a bone of a man or a grave shall be unclean seven days. And for an unclean person, they shall take of the ashes of the burnt heifer of purification for sin. <coughs> and running water shall be put thereunto into a vessel. And a clean person shall take hyssop and dip it in the water and sprinkle it upon the tent and upon the vessels and upon the persons that were there. And upon it that touched a bone or one slain or one dead or a grave. And the clean person shall sprinkle upon the unclean on the third day and on the seventh day. And on the seventh day, he shall purify himself and wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and shall be clean at evening. But the man that shall be unclean and shall not purify himself, that soul shall be cut off from among the assembly because he has defiled the sanctuary of Yahweh, and the water of separation has not been sprinkled upon him. He is unclean, and it shall be a perpetual statute unto them that he that sprinkles the water of separation shall wash his clothes, and he that touches the water of separation shall be unclean until evening. And whatsoever the unclean person touches, he shall be unclean. And the soul that touches it shall be unclean until evening. Chapter 20. And then came the children of Yasharel, even the whole assembly into the desert of Tzin, in the first month. And the people abode in Kadesh, and Miriam died there, and was buried there. And there was no water for the assembly. And they gathered themselves together again, Moshe. And against Aaron, and the people chode with Moshe and spoke, saying, Would to Elohim that we had died when our brethren died before Yahweh? And why have he brought us in the assembly of Yahweh into the wilderness, that we and our cattle should die there? And wherefore he have made us to come out of Mitzrayim to bring us into this evil place? It is no place or of seed, or figs, or vines, or, or pomegranates. Neither is there any water to drink. Interesting that he was talking about the water of separation. Now they come to a place where Miriam died. And now they don't find this water, this water to be mixed with the red heifer's uh, ashes. So uh, theoretically, there is, uh, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a thought that, well, now they, they, they don't have the means um, for this water of separation um, to cleanse themselves. And it says, I mean, if, if, if they do not cleanse themselves, then they are excluded from Yasharel. Um, so that's, that's what I was sort of thinking in my mind when we were reading through here. And Yahweh spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Take it the rod and gather it the assembly together, you and Aaron and your brother, and speak into the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and you shall bring forth to them water out of the rock, so you shall give it the assembly, and if the beasts drink. Interesting that this rock comes and and he's supposed to speak to the rock, right? So I would like at this stage to go to 1 Corinthians and then 10. Let me just check here. Because obviously we see now the rock, right? And I'm going to read actually from verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all of our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the, the sea 
and were all immersed unto Moshe in the cloud and in the sea. And did eat all the same spiritual food. Interesting that he mentions their spiritual food. And in this chapter, we see here, there's no place for seed or figs, vines or of pomegranates. Neither is there any water to drink. Well, all these things are listed in spiritual senses in the, in the, in the scriptures. Um, so there's, there's a connotation, I believe, to spiritual things and not just to, to those uh, few things that were mentioned there. And did all drink, this is verse 4 of, second, of 1 Corinthians 10, and did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Mashiach. But with many of them, Yahweh was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things, and this is what we will read about a little bit further on in this portion. Now these things were our examples to intent we should not lust after the evil things as they also lusted. And that we will also find out in the, in the story of Balaam. And, uh, you know, so you don't lust after what the world can give you, but you listen to what Yah's word is saying to us. It's not about uh, that we lust after um, our own fleshly desires. Neither be he idolatrous, as were some of them. As it was written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Mashiach, as some of them also tempted Yahweh, and they were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur he, as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them, for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinks he stands take heed, lest he fall. So we're going to carry on. I'm going to leave it at there. And, and, and as, we, as we read further, we will see that there's so much of that that is actually addressed in this Torah portion. Um, so it says, uh, speaking unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and you shall bring forth to them water out of the rock, so you shall give at the assembly, and their beasts drink. And Moshe took the rod from before Yahweh, as he commanded him, and Moshe and Aaron gathered at the assembly together before the rock. And he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? It's interesting, yeah, that, that, he's, that he's added this, because that's not what Yah said, that he must fetch the water. He said he must just speak to the water and uh, speak to the rock, and the water will come out. <clears throat> but now he's adding, right? And, and I think that could be uh, one of the issues. And Moshe lifted up his hand, and with a rod he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly, and the assembly drank, and their beast also. Now in Exodus 17 and verse 6, we see him smiting a rock. That was at a different time, I believe. Um, and, and the water does come out there, because Yahweh actually tells him in Exodus 17 to smite the rock. But here he says, speak to the rock. And sometimes I think that's the same for us because we have a recipe in our mind of how we're going to do things. You know, so, sometimes we think, oh, no, no, this is the way we prayed for things before. Well, this is the way that we did things before. And now let's just redo that. But do we actually take the time to hear what Yah is saying or even consider that? Or do we just think, oh, no, no, this is the way we've done it. And we're going to do it again in the same way. David. In uh, John, uh, I think it's 738, uh, he says, He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly 
shall flow rivers of living water. Mm. And that springing forth, that wellspring of water, is a flow of the Ruach mm. and the anointing. And mm. so uh, speaking to that rock and not smiting that rock is a discernment that <clears throat> uh, is given that one, one will be costly, very costly, and the other will be very profitable. But it's, uh, it's a water that springs forth from within us unto eternal everlasting life. Uh, that's uh, primary. That's, that, that's, that's ultimately extremely important to us. So can we speak to that rock within our hearts and spring forth living water unto an everlasting life? Mm -hmm. uh, well, he said that. And so uh, in, in Yahushua's name, we call uh, to that rock within us all to ask us to speak, spring forth. And the Ruach HaYahua have... Uh, that living water uh, flow to all of us in Yosha's name. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's that's awesome words. Um, this is John seven. Hey, uh, sorry, man. I'm just trying to find it. Seven thirty-eight. Seven thirty-eight. Amen. Amen. Uh, because he also says the same thing to the woman at the well. Not so. So, what is he also, he's, he's speaking of exactly the same thing there, right? Speaking of the Ruach. Um, may, I, may I say something about the woman yeah, at yeah, the yeah, well? Yeah, Yasser Arafat, remember him? Yeah, he gave he gave that property to the Shomeronites to even go there. You have they possess that land. They believe there is a great quantity of them today that are still the fruit of Yahusha spending two days with them after the woman of the well. It's still there. And some of the oldest paleo scrolls in the world are in their possession. And they still, that's what they use. They use paleo. And they dress differently. And they possess the land. Now, you can't even go there without a special kind of uh, uh, passport oh, kind no. of thing. It's mm -hmm. just, you can't go there at all. You can't go there at all through Israelis. And the Israelis persecute them persecute yep, them they will do. and and see the issue is is that that fruit that yahushua gave to them after the two days with the, the at shomer still is there today and they possess the land that's really important to know that very important very important and so i want to read something else from um from the gospel of john 16 because this whole portion leads to, to this truth here as well. It says here, um, okay, it is expedient for you that I go away. This is how we should talk. For if I, not, uh, if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come... He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and he see me no more. And of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Now these three things are, 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 are quite important in that, and that would what will follow on with this with this Torah portion. I have yet many things to say to you, but cannot bear them now. How be it? 
and 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 we must know that this he is not in the scripture, right? But anyway, how bear it when he, which is not really there, how bear it when the Ruach Emeth is come, will guide you in all truth. For shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you the things to come. So the Ruach Emeth will glorify me, it says. For shall receive, so because he will receive of mine and shall show it to you. And this is the interesting part because we cannot understand this if we do not read this in this concept, in this con context of the Ruach Emeth. Judy, please share share with us. Yeah, I just have a comment on the striking the rock twice. I believe why he got in trouble is because Yahusha only died on the cross once. And now we're supposed to speak to him and, and that when we sin. So that I just was a comment there. <laughs> I think you I think uh, you know I I had the same thought. Um and and to me the rock was Mashiach. And by striking it twice, I really believe that it's the first time of striking it was the crucifix crucifixion of Mashiach. But the second time is all the time since then that they are striking upon the name, that they are blocking him out. As David just said, you know, they're persecuting the Christians, they, or, or the, the believers rather. So they, be, they, they persecute those that believe in the Messiah that has come for them. And I mean, that is exactly, you know, we, we strike it. And then obviously the church that says, well, we're going to sacrifice this Yahusha, this Jesus, as they call him, every week in our church service. We are killing him, and then we're eating of his flesh again. So it's actually almost a blasphemy of, 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 of killing him again and again and again, because that's what they believe they have power over. I mean, that's, that's a scary point. That's a scary, scary thing to do. So I, 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 I agree I with you, Judy. May I say, Chris, it not only yeah. may be a blasphemy, it is a blasphemy. It is, and, of it, course. and it is it is unclean, and is going to be costly for them. And this is a warning. This is a warning and an observance that you just made, and I uh, I really like that. Amen. Thank you. All right. Well, I mean, thanks to the ruach. So there we go. Um, okay. So, and then verse twelve. And Yahweh spoken to Mo Moshe and El Aaron because he believed me not. See, that's what we just read in that uh, portion in, in John 16, right? Of sin, because you do not believe in me, right? So here it says that you believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Yasharel. Well, what is righteous? Righteousness is sanctification, but that cannot be obtained through us. It's obtained only by one which is Yahusha, right? I mean, he's the one who sanctifies us. Um, but we can, in the eyes, in the eyes of Yahshua, right? So, in other words, what are we telling people by our ways and by our, our um, uh, what we, what, by what we do, what we say? Uh, that is quite important. Um, Therefore, shall, therefore, he shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Yashorel stole with Yahweh, and he was sanctified in them. So this is a promise, right? The promise, you will not inherit the promise. Because, first of all, you didn't believe. And second of all, you didn't bring Yah's uh, uh, restitution 
or sanctification by uh, righteousness to the people. And this is what we, care, we continue doing. We continue if, and I'm, not, and I'm not saying we do, I'm just saying this is what we continue doing if we do not give Yahusha, who is the salvation of the world, to the people that need it. In other words, everyone. That's what we're doing. We continue with this, with this unbelief. And, and, and this is unbelief that the world needs. Because Yah didn't die for you and me. He died for the world. And that's quite an important, a very important uh, point. David. In, in, my, in my thinking, uh, we only water and we only sow. And it's you that gives the increase. So we can't make anybody do anything. And the fruitfulness that would spring forth in them is Yahuwah given the increase. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we wouldn't want to take any of that esteem because it's not ours. We have to uh, rely only on Yahuwah and him giving the increase of it's his seed and it's his water. Amen. And so, so we won't never ever want to move into that thing like our ability or our this and our that. It's Yahuwah's, it's Yahuwah's gifting to us to be able to speak his, his him, him speak through us, and that mm -hmm. gives the increase. If that if that doesn't happen, there's not going to be anything that happens because he mm -hmm. he's not going to endorse anybody else. That's that's all I got. Yeah, amen. Amen. Uh, but yet we still are his uh, his his well, workmanship, and and we 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 hopefully, and I say this with great trepidation because we fail. Well, I failed so much, um, but hopefully we are good mouthpiece and good feet for himself right for the ruach elohim um to be able to work through us and that that's not our own ability that is Yah's ability as you just rightfully said um very very important that we, and and that comes to the humbleness right to humble humble ourselves before Yah, you know because pride pride is is something that uh, that hurts us dearly i think um, 14. And Moshe sent, sent messages of Kadesh to the king of Edom. Thus says your brother Yasharel, you know if all the travail that has befallen us, how our fathers went down into Mitzrahim, and we have dwelt in Mitzrahim a long time, and Mitzrahim vexed us and our fathers. And when we cried unto El Yahweh, he heard our voice and sent an angel and has brought us forth out of Mitzrayim, and behold, we are in Kadesh, the city of the utmost of your border. Let us pass, I pray you, through your country, and we will not pass through the fields nor the vineyards, neither will we drink of the water of the wells. We will go by the king's highway, and we will not turn to the right or to the left until we have passed your borders. And Edom said unto him, you shall not pass by me, lest I come out against you with a sword. And the children of Yasharel said unto him, We will go by the highway. And if I and my cattle drink of your water, then I will pay for it. I will only, without doing anything else, go through on my feet. And he said, You shall not go through. And Edom came against him with much people, and with a strong hand. Thus Edom refused to give Yasharel passage through his border. And wherefore Yasharel turned away from him, and the children of Yasharel, even the whole assembly, journeyed from Kadesh and came to Mount Hor. And Yahweh spoke unto El Moshe and El Aaron in Mount Hor by the coast of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, for he shall not enter into the land which I 
have given unto the children of Yashirel, because he rebelled against my word at the water of Meribah. Take it Aaron and Eliezer the son, and bring them up to Mount Hall, and strip Aaron of his garments, and put them upon Eliezer his son, and Aaron shall be gathered unto his people, and shall die there. And Moshe did as Yahweh commanded, and they went up into Mount Hall in the sight of all the assembly. And Moshe stripped Aaron of his garments and put them upon his Eliezer his son. And Aaron died there in the top of the mount. And Moshe and Eliezer came down from the mount. And when all the assembly saw that Aaron was dead, they mourned for Aaron thirty days, even all the house of Yasharel. Chapter 21. And when King Arad, the Kenani, which dwelt in the Negev, heard tell that heard tell that Yasharel came by the way of the spies, then he fought against Yasharel and took some of them prisoners. And Yasharel vowed a vow unto Yahweh and said, If you will indeed deliver these people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And Yahweh hearkened to the voice of Yasharel and delivered up the Kenanim, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. And he called the name of the place Gomorrah. This is interesting because in my mind, I'm thinking of today's terms and who takes us captive. And I believe that's the world. The world takes us captive by the lusts of the world um, and, and, and the things that they try and offer us. And, um, you know, this could be money or this could be uh, a job or this could be um, all the things that the world can offer us. And, um, and then do we as believers um, redeem ourselves or redeem those that we love from this? I would almost say it's a curse. Um that that the world uh, entices us into and we become slaves to it right and i mean you know all of us in a certain way are, are slaves to this to this world because we live in it and we've got to make, find an existence in it and it's and it's not always easy and they journeyed from mount hall by the way of the red sea to compass at the land of eden and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way and the people spoke against Elohim and against Moshe. Wherefore have you brought us up out of an animate stream to die in the wilderness? Is There is no bread, neither is there any water. And our soul loathes this light bread. Right? So what they're doing is they're saying that they are, they are tired of Yah's bread. So um, the light bread, which is interesting. I mean, the light bread nourished them. Nourished them for 38 years or 39 years, depending on how, how long this was up to this point. And, um, but now they're looking for a different bread. They're looking for maybe a bread that is, uh, is, is given by the world, um, which is a heavy bread, maybe, you know. Um, so it's interesting. I, I, I'm, I'm not saying anything about that because I can't really speak to it, but it is just sort of very interesting symbology symbology if, you, if you're going to think of it that way and Yahweh sent a fiery serpents among the people and they bit at the people and much people of Yasharel died therefore the people came to Moshe saying we have sinned and we have spoken against Yahweh and against you pray unto El Yahweh that he take away the serpents from us and Moshe prayed for the people and Yahweh said unto Moshe Make you a sarath and set it upon a banner. Now, in our word, in our different words, we might read, make you a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. Um, but that's not what it said. <clears throat> what it says actually in the Hebrew is you will make a banner and put a sarath on this banner, which is, which is more like a dragon. And um, when the people see this, um, it, will, it will heal them. 
uh, interesting thought because a banner and a Sarat on this banner or a, or a flag won't last very long. Now, we see that the serpent that Moshe makes a couple of, uh, in the next verse, the, the serpent of brass, well, they find this. Hezekiah finds this. And what does he find with this? That people are worshipping it. So I think this symbol that he made, although it worked at the time, uh, it, it was the grace and the mercy of Yah that it, that it worked, um, wasn't meant to be such a permanent institution, wasn't meant to be such a permanent, uh, how can I say, uh, uh, object, because what happens is when people have these things that are miracle working, then they take it as what we've just read uh, previously, that you'll have a recipe, right? You've got a recipe for success. Well, this is the way that you re re recipe or bring a certain outcome to pass is that you do the same thing over and over. But not with Yah. Yah is always doing new things. But he wants us to hear from him. He wants us to seek him. And I think that's quite important with this, with this, with this passage. Uh, and I'm just going to read this last verse and then I'm going to go to David. And Moshe made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a, the serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he... David? When Master Yosha said, uh, I'll be lifted up, I'll, uh, and some of the... Some of the words it says, I will draw all men to myself, but that's erroneous. It talks about now the judgment of the world is. If I be lifted up, I will draw all judgment to me. That's what he was meaning. So <clears throat> that uh, that stopped that the serpents from biting them is related to if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all judgment to me. So how that works today is that the realization that he took upon him the penalty and <clears throat> that that protection comes yep. to the ones that comes to the ones that uh, have the insight of that you know then look upon this and you'll be safe well it's an insight thing to us that when he delivers us from sin and death he took upon himself our transgressions and by his stripes we're healed that's how it's way up amen amen i like that and uh the point the point about um you know what i was saying now uh with let us not make an institution so we know that there's this body that loves to hang Yah Usha on the cross and uh, put it up in their churches, um, of which I was, I was a member many, many, many years ago. The point remains that that was not an institution. That was a one-time thing. He came off that cross, right? And... And, and, and he's not there anymore. And in fact, his body is not even in the grave. So, you know, this is, this is, this is the same thing, right? Now, Moshe makes this fiery serpent, puts it in a pole, and we find the people worshipping this thing many, many years later with Hezekiah. However, same thing is happening today. They put... Uh, a body on a cross and they put it in a church and many people are buying down to this image and this is not the image of the savior you know and 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 i think that the point about the sarah is that how long can a piece of cloth last in the desert not very long probably a year maybe 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 longer i don't know but after a year i mean you've seen a flag whether it's American, South African, whatever, if you leave that thing upon the pole and you leave it there for a, for a number of months, 
it starts to look tatty, it breaks down. It's not something forever. It's something that you've got to keep on replacing if you want that symbol. But I think this symbol was something very interesting. And, and I mean, look, we know that in the, in the Besora, it mentions this exact thing. Just as the serpent was lifted upon the pole, well, so Yahusha's ministry is lifted on the pole. And that is a very, very powerful symbol. It's a very powerful symbol of a Messiah um, who has taken on fleshly proportions and died, even died on a cross for us. Hallelujah. That is an amazing story. But the fact is that it's a once-off thing and he's done. And it's done and it's finished. And, and, and by that deed, he has overcome the evil of this world. And he's overcome the, the, the um, uh, well, he's overcome the evil one, the prince of this world, which we've just read in uh, John 16. And therefore, our righteousness is not our own righteousness. And it can never be. It can never be our own strength. As you've said there, David, earlier on, it's never our own strength. It's only in his strength that we can uh, have righteousness and have the overcoming. Uh, because how is it possible that we can do good to those that harm us? How is it possible that we can be long-suffering to these people that do us harm? Well, it's only through the love and the endurance that Yah gives us that we can do these things. David, please. You're not, uh, you're not, you're still muted, David. He says, high and lifted up. That's not on the stake. That's lifted up, seated at the right hand of Yahuwah, his resurrected in the flesh body. Now, that's high and lifted up. And that's what you were uh, uh, addressing. That's not, we don't stop there with, he paid for it. Yeah. Then he was resurrected from the dead and is high and lifted up, seated at the right hand of Yahuwah, expecting mm -hmm. all of his enemies to be made his footstool. There's the big deal of what see this. This is what we look at, the high mm -hmm. and lifted up. He was mm -hmm. lifted up on, on the stake for our transgressions, and then he was raised from the dead as an example of the gift of life everlasting. And then he's high and lifted up and he gave us a present. He gave us the living water to, to flow from within us unto what? Unto eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How cool Amen. is that? Amen. 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 Um, okay, verse 10. And the children of Yashorel said forward, pitched in Ovroth. And they came from Ovroth and pitched in Aye. Ha Avram in the wilderness, which is before Moab towards the sun rising. From thence they removed and pitched in the valley of Zared. From hence they moved and pitched on the other side of Arnon, which is in the wilderness that comes out of the coasts of the Marim. For Arnon is the border of Moab between Moab and the Marim. And wherefore it is said, in the sepher of the wars of Yahweh, what he did in the Red Sea and at the brooks of Anon and at the stream of the brooks that goes down to the dwelling of Ar and lies upon the border of, of, of Moab. From thence they went to Beer, that is the well whereof Yahweh spoke unto Moshe and gathered it, the people together I will give them water. And Yasharal sang this song, Spring up, O well, sing he unto it. Isn't that beautiful? That's what you were talking about earlier on, David. The spring up, O well, and see he, see, sing he unto it. The princes dug the well, and the nobles of the people dug it by the direction of the Torah giver with their staves. And from the wilderness they went to Matana, and from Matana to Nach, Nach 
Nakhalil, and from Nakhalil to Bamoth, and from Bamoth in the valley that is in the country of Moab to the top of Pigach, which looks towards Yeshimon. Now, Yasharal sent messages unto Chikion, the king of the Norim, saying, Let us pass through the land. We will not turn to the fields or into the vineyards, or we will not drink of the waters of the well, but will go along by the king's highway until we pass your borders. And Shiloh would not suffer the Asherol to pass through his border. But Sion gathered eth all the people together and went out against Yasharal into the wilderness and came to Yats and found against Yashar and fought against Yasharal. And Yasharal smote him with the edge of the sword and possessed their land from Anon to Yaakov, even unto the children of Ammon. And the borders of the children of Ammon were strong. And Yasharal took at these cities, and Yasharal dwelt in all the cities of Emorim, in Chashbon, and all the villages thereof. For Cheshbon was the city of Sinon. Sorry. And he built and prepared. For there is a fire gone out of Cheshbon and flame from the city of Sechon and has consumed Ar and Moab and Baali, Bamoth of Arnon. Woe unto you, Moab, you are undone, O people of Kamosh. And he has given his sons that escaped and the daughters into captivity, Charoth, the king of the Emarim. We have shot them at them, and Cheshbath, and perished even unto Divon, which we have laid them waste, even unto Nofach, which reaches to Merida. Thus Yasharel dwelt in the land of Emorim, and Moshe sent to spy out the Yash the Yahazir. Excuse me if I'm butchering the names. I, I, I do not know these pronunciations very well. And they took to the villages thereof and drove out the Emorim that were there. And they turned and they went up by the way of Bashan and Og, and the king of Bashan went out against them and all his people to battle at Edri. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Fear him not, for I have delivered him unto your hand and all the people and his land. And you shall do to him as you did to Shannon, the king of the Amorim, Cheshbon. So they smote him and his sons and all the people, until there was none left, him alive, and they possessed it, the land. And the children of Yasharal set forth and pitched in the plains of Moab on the side of the Yadon by the Yericho. And Balak, the king of Tzipor, sorry, there we go, let me just put that on. And Balak, the king of Tzipor, was the king of the Moabim at that time. And he sent messages, therefore, to Balaam, the son of Beor Bethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Mitzrayim. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray you, curse me at these people. For they are too mighty for me. The chance I shall prevail that, that, that we may smite them and that I may drive them out of the land. For I know that he at whom you bless is blessed and him who you curse is cursed. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with their rewards of divination in their hand. And they came unto Biliam, and they spoke unto him the words of Balak. And he said unto them, Lodge there this night, and I will bring you word again, as Yahweh shall speak unto me. 
and the princes of Moab abode with Bilian. And Elohim came to Bilian, and he said, What men are these with you? And Bilian said unto Elohim, Balak, the son of Sephor, the king of Moab, has sent me and uh, is sent unto me, saying, Behold, there is a people come out of Mitzrayim, which covers the face of the earth. Come now, curse me them, perchance I shall be able to overcome them and drive them out. Very interesting story, this, because Yah Yahweh is speaking to this person. This person is a prophet. It's a prophet of Yah. But he's, he's, he, he might be uh, confused, but he nonetheless is hearing from the Creator. And here these other people come with hands, with, with, with hands filled with divination. And um, well, what does it say here? The elders of Moab and the elders of Midian depart with the rewards of divination in their hand. In other words, with, with, um, with, they, they're trying to buy this, this, this prophet out, right? And, and that's very similar to what we've just read, because who's buying you out? Is the world buying you out? Is the world tainting you so that you cannot speak the truth? Is the world maybe got you in a grip which is sinful, and therefore you feel too ashamed to actually live out the truth that you know? Well, all these things are questions that we've got to keep on asking ourselves. We've got to keep on uh, inquiring from the yeah. Because it's so easy to be caught up in this world, in sin, and in doing things that are not of God. And, um, and, and, and this is an interesting and a very important part of our belief system, that we actually look for Yah, and that we look for truth. Because the spirit of the myth, which is truth, has to abide within us to give us truth so that we can believe the right things. Anyway, and verse 12, and Elohim said unto Bilium, if, you, no, you shall not go with them, you shall not curse at the people, for they are blessed. And Bilium rose up in the morning and said unto the people, the princes of the luck, get you into the land, uh, for, for Yahweh refuses to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose up, and they went into Balak and said, Bilium refuses to come with us. And Balak sent again princes, more and more honorable than they. And they came into Bileam, and they said unto him, This is Balak, the son of Tzipor. Let nothing, I pray you, hinder from coming unto me. For I will promote you unto very great honor, and I will do whatsoever you say unto me. Come, therefore, I pray you, and curse me at these people. Well, that's man's reward right there. Man's reward might be very sweet and you might think upon it three times. But we've got to heed only unto Yah. And William answered and they said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of Yahweh Elohai to do less or more. Now, therefore, I pray you, tarry me here also this night, that I may know what Yahweh will say unto me more. Sorry, I'm just looking for a part here where it says here in, the, in, the, in, in chapter 20, what we've just read, and Chapter 20 and verse 24, it says, Aaron will be gathered unto his people, for he shall not enter into the land which I have given unto the children of Yashorel, because he rebelled against my word at the water of Meribah. So he rebelled against the word. And here, Yah is telling Biliam, uh, and, and Biliam is telling now the, the princes, he says, and William answered and said unto them, the servants of Balak, if Balak would give me a house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond it, the word of Yahweh and Ohai, to do less or more. Right? We read that in, we read that also. 
in Revelation, that you will not add to this word, nor will you subtract from that word, right? And um, and 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 this is basically we we have uh, we have the oath of Beaker in, in Enoch mentioned in Enoch chapter sixty nine. Well, the point is about the oath of Beaker is that's how Yah has created the world, that's how He's fashioned it, and that's how He's caused it to work. The point is that are we living into Yah's way of designing things and His way of doing things, or are we going on our own? esteem and and that's a very important question to always ask of ourselves now therefore i pray you tarry he also here this night that he may know what yahweh will say unto me more and elohim came to blame that night and said unto him if the men call to uh, come to call you rise up and go with them but yet the word which I shall say unto you, that shall you do. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled at his ass and went with the princes of Moab. So here he he uh, he succumbs, doesn't he? He succumbs to them. He says, okay, well, I'll come with you because Yah has said I must come with you. But did Yas really mean it or was he testing and that's an interesting fact, because what does he say in the next verse? He says, and Elohim's anger was kindled because he went. And the angel of Yah stood in the way for an adversary against him. And he was riding upon his ass. And this is quite a funny part, because this is sometimes how we act. And we react. Because sometimes we react in a real, real strange way. And his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of Yahweh standing in the way, with his sword drawn in his hands. And the ass turned aside, out of the way, and went to the field. But Billiam smote the ass and turned her into the way. And the angel of Yah stood in the path of the vineyards, a wall being on this side and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw that the angel of Yahweh, he thrust himself against the wall and crushed Billiam's foot, against the wall, and he smote her again. And the angel of Yahweh went further and stood in the narrow place where was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. And when they saw that the angel of Yahweh, he fell down under Biliam, and Biliam's anger was kindled, and he smote it as with a staff. And Yahweh opened it his mouth of the... Yahweh opened the mouth of the ass, and... She said unto Biliam, What have I done unto you, that you have smitten me these three times? And Biliam said unto this, Because you have mocked me, I would there were a sword in my hand, for now would I kill you. It's interesting when you start talking to a donkey. When, you so, when you're so angry that you don't even notice that you're talking to a donkey, right? I mean, this is, this is typical. You know, when we get so angry that we just want to talk, we don't think, we just, we reacting, right? And uh, the ass said unto Biliam, Am I not your ass upon you, which you have ridden ever since I was yours unto this day? Was I ever wont to do so to you? And he said, Nay. And when Yahweh opened the eyes of Biliam, and he saw the angel of Yahweh standing in the way with his sword drawn in his hand, he bowed down his head, and he fell flat on his face. And the angel of Yahweh said unto him, Wherefore have you smitten at your ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand you, because your way is perverse before me. And the ass saw me, and he turned from me these three times, unless she had turned from me, Surely now also I had slain you and saved her alive. And Biliam said unto the angel of Yahweh, I have sinned, for I knew not that you stood in the way against me. Now therefore, if it is displease you, I will get me back again. This is a very interesting um, thought, if you will. To me, 
I'm thinking about the Good Samaritan and you're thinking about what he does, right? The Good Samaritan takes um, the person laying on the side of the road and he binds him up and he binds him up with wine and with oil and he sets him upon his own beast and he leads them to the inn. And what does he do there? He pays for him two days. And he says, when I return, I will pay what is needed. Now, here in the same vein, uh, Billiam is saved by this beast, this beast that he's riding upon, because he doesn't want to listen. And um, he's, 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 he's basically going against the word of God. And he is destined to fall. But this beast saves him. Right and 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 that's an interesting uh, connotation, I think. Uh, <clears throat> and then um, thirty-four. And William said unto the angel of Yahweh, "I have sinned, for I knew not that you stood in the way against me. Now therefore." If it displease you, I will get me back again. And the angel of Yahweh said unto Billiam, Go with the men, but only at the word that I shall speak unto you, that you shall speak. So Billiam went with the princes of Balak. And Balak heard that Billiam was come. He went out to meet him to the city of Moab, which is in the border of Anon, which is in the uttermost coast. And Balak said unto Billiam, Did you not earnestly send unto you, uh, sorry, did I not earnestly send unto you to call you? Wherefore came you not unto me? Am I not able to indeed to promote you to honor? See how the world does it. The world will entice you to these honors that they can promote you. And that they can give you honor. And Billiam said unto Balak, Lo, I have come unto you, and I have, I, and, I, and now any power at all to say anything, the word of Elohim puts in my mouth that I shall speak. And Billiam went with Balak, and they came into Karat Cheroth, and Balak offered oxen and sheep, and said unto Billiam and the princes that were with him, and it came to pass that on the morrow that Balak took William and brought him up into the house, into the high places of Baal, that thence he might see the uttermost part of the people. And William said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, and prepare me seven oxen and seven rams. Very interesting because here he's going back into a recipe. This is a recipe. What recipe? Well, this is a recipe to summon Yah or to ask Yah to come speak to me. And, and this is what happens. Yah honors this. But because I think uh, that because William's a prophet, right? And I think he honors that in that, in that vein, in that, in that stead. Um, but was it the right thing? Well, that's questionable. And Balak said to William, uh, had, sorry, and Balak did as William spoke. And Balak and William offered on every altar Bullock and a ram. And William said unto Balak, Stand by your burnt offering, and I will go. Perchance Yahweh will come to meet me. And whatsoever he shows me, I will tell him. And he went to the high place, and Elohim met Billiam. And he said unto him, I have prepared seven altars, and I have offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And Yahweh put a word in Billiam's mouth and said, Return to Balak, and thus you shall speak. And he returned to him, and lo, he stood by a burnt sacrifice, and he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his parable, and he said, Balak, the king of Moab, has brought me from Aram, out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, Yaakov, 
and come defy Yeshurel? How shall I curse whom El has not cursed? And how shall I defy whom Yahweh has not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the peoples shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Who can count the dust of Yaakov and the number of the fourth part of Yeshua? Let me die in the death of the Yasharalim, and let my last end be like his. Okay, so, so this verse 8 is extremely important to me, because this to me is the difference between the world and between us. When it says here, how shall I curse whom El has not cursed? And how shall I define who Yahweh has not defined? Well, doesn't that keep us in safety? Doesn't that keep us in a place that is completely safe? Because if we are in Yah's will and we are walking the way of Yah, then there is nothing that can come against us without him knowing about it. So anything that is coming against us, um, well, put it this way, no harm can come against you because who can curse you? Nothing. So don't worry about it. Don't be fearful of it. Because Yahusha is not going to curse you. And this area, this, uh, uh, this is interesting. Verse 10, who can count the dust of Yaakov and the number of the fourth part of Yasharel? Well, this was so many people that he saw a fourth part, the, the leading tribes, the leading three tribes, and even them he couldn't count. And Revelation 7, 9, <clears throat> maybe we should just go there quickly. In Revelation, it talks about the, it talks about the 144,000, right? and it talks about the, the tribes. And after the, and, and verse 9 says, After this, behold, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number. All the nations and the kindreds and the peoples and the tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Yahusha, our Yahweh, which sit upon the throne and unto the Lamb. This is interesting, isn't it? Yeah, there's a number of people that you cannot number. And there in Revelation, the same thing. And Balak, this is verse 11. And Balak said unto Balaam, What have you done unto me? I took you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have blessed them altogether. And he answered, and he said, Must I not take heed to speak that which Yahweh has put in my mouth? And Balak said unto him, Come, I pray you, with me to another place, from whence we see them. And you shall see the utmost parts of them, and you shall not see them at all, and curse me them from thence. And he brought him to the field and sipped for him on the top of Pekach, and built seven altars, and offered upon a bull, and a, a bullock, and a ram on every altar. And he said unto Balak, Stand here by your burnt offering, while I meet Yahweh yonder. And Yahweh met Balaam and put a word in his mouth and said, Go again into Balak and say thus. And when he came and, and to, unto him, behold, he stood by his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, What has Yahweh spoken? And he said, And he took up his parable. He said, Rise up, Balak, and hear, hearken to me, you son of Zippor. El is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of Adam that he should repent. He has said that he is not, sorry, he has said, <coughs> and shall he not do it? Or he has spoken, and he shall not make it good. In other words, what Yah says, that is going to happen. And what he means, that is what's going to be done. 
Behold, I have received the commandment to bless, and he has blessed. And I cannot reverse it. He has not beheld the iniquity in your court, even has he seen the perverseness in Yasharal. Yahweh Eloheinu is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. <clears throat> and this is the point, because we are Yasharal, right? We are the people who are called by his name. And if we are the people who are called by his name, then Yah sees us as he sees Yasharal. And if Yah says here, that he does not behold their iniquity. The same thing for us. How many times do these people follow after the wrong thing? How many times do they worship unto the, the wrong yas? How many, or rather, the wrong, their gods, right? They, 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 um, they are perverse, but Yah chooses not to see their perverseness. And this is an amazing, beautiful thing. And El brought them out of Mitzrayim. He has, as it were, the strength of a rhinoceros. Surely there is no entrancement against Yaakov, neither is there any divination against Yasharal. According to this time, it shall be said of Yaakov and of Yasharal, what has El wrought? Behold, the people is raised up as a great lion, and lifted up himself as a young lion. And he shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink of the blood of the slain. And Balak said unto Bilaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. But Bilaam answered and said unto Balak, told, <coughs> you, uh, to told not I you, saying, All that Yahweh speaks, that I must do. And Balak said unto Bilaam, Come, I pray you, I will bring you to another place, perchance it will please Elohim that you may cause me them, uh, that you will curse me them from thence. And Balak brought Ephilim to the top of Prior that looks toward the Yeshimono. Uh, Yesh, this is interesting because he's bringing him to another place. And this is indicative of worshipping Baal. Or worshipping different gods. Because if the one doesn't tell you the right thing. Then you just go to the next one. And you go to the next high place. And, 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 and this is what he was thinking. He was thinking well. If I take him to another place. Then maybe the Yah of heaven is going to say something else. Or say something different. This is not, this is not what Yah is about. He will never say what is different. He's always the same. And thank Yah for that. Because as much as what we like to change clothes, that's our personality sometimes. And uh, But Yah is the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and for all them. And Balaam said unto Balak, build me here seven altars and prepare me here seven, and, and prepare me here seven bullocks and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam said, and they offered a bullock and a ram upon every altar. And when Balaam saw it, he pleased Yahweh to bless Yashar, and he went not as the other times, to seek enchantments. But he set his face towards the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Yeshurel abiding in tents, according to their tribes. And the Ruach Elohim came upon him. And he took up his parable, and he said, Balaam, the son of Beor, has said, and the man whose eyes are open has said, he has said, which heard these voice, these words of El, which saw the visions of El Shaddai falling into an um, into a trance, but having his eyes open. Now, how goodly are your tents, O Yaakov, and your tabernacles, O Yasharal, as the valleys they spread forth. As gardens by the river's side are the trees of a lined aloes, which Yahweh has planted, as a cedar trees beside the waters. And he shall pour the water out of his buckets, and his seed shall be in many waters. And the king 
shall be higher than Og, and his kingdom shall be exalted. Al brought him forth out of Mitzrayim. He that has, as it were, the strength of the rhinoceros. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies, and shall break their bones and pierce them through with his arrows. He crouched and he laid down as a lion, as a great lion, who has stirred up him up. Who has stirred him up? Sorry. Blessed is he that blesses you and cursed is he that curses you. I'd like to go to Acts 10 at this point because Acts 10 reminds me of something that Yah has done for us. Acts 10 and 28. And it says here, And he said unto them, Remember, this is in Joppa. This is Kepha in Joppa, right? And what does he see there? And he said unto him, He know that it is unlawful for a man that a, is a Yahudi to keep company or come unto one another of an, and to come to one of another nation. But Yahweh has shown me that I should not for any man common or unclean. Therefore, I came into you without gainsaying. Right? So how did he come to this knowledge? Well, he came to this knowledge that when he was sitting there, he saw what? He saw that uh, um, that it was, it was, there was unclean things, right? In, in, let's just start here in Acts 10, verse 9. On the morrow, as they went to journey, they drew nigh to the city, and Kepha went up to the house spot top to pray about the sixth hour. And he came very hungry. And what have, uh, sorry, and he became very hungry and would have eaten, but... While they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw it heaven open and a certain vessel discerning unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice unto him, and rise, Kepha, kill and eat. But Kepha said, Not so, Adonai, for I have never eaten any unclean, anything that is, un, that is common or unclean. And the voice of him again the second time, What Yah has cleansed, that call not common. What was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now, while Kepha doubted himself in the vision which he had seen, should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made the inquiry of Shimeon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked where the Shimeon was, surname was Kepha, were lodged there. And while Kepha threw out uh, thought on the vision, the Ruach came unto him and said, Behold, three men seeing you. Arise, therefore, and get you down, and go with them, doubting nothing. For I have sent them. And Kepha went down with the men that were sent to him by, from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he who seek. What is the cause wherefore he are come? And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, one that fears Yah, good report among the nations of the Yahweh, of the nation, was Warned from Yahweh and holy angels sent to his house, and you he hear the words from you. And they called, and he, sorry, then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow, Kepha went that lay with them, and a certain brethren from Yaffa accompanied him. And the morrow, after they entered into Karath, 
and Cornelius waited for them, and he called them to his kinsmen near his friends, and Kepha was coming in. Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Kepha took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also a man. And he talks with him. He went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, He know that what is unlawful thing for a man that a Yahudi to keep company or to come to another of another nation. But Yahweh showed me that I should not fall upon any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying me as soon as I was sent. For I asked therefore what he intent he have sent me. And Cornelius said, four days ago I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. He said, Cornelius, your prayer is heard, and your arms are, are had in remembrance in the sight of Yahweh. Stand therefore in Yapo, and call, send therefore in, in Yapo, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Kepha. He is lodged in the house of one Shimeon and Tana by the seaside, who shall speak unto you. And immediately, therefore, I sent for you, and it's well done, uh, and you have well done that you are come. Now, therefore, are we at the presence before Yahweh to hear the things that he has commanded Yahweh? And Kepha opened his mouth, and he said, Of a truth, I perceive that Yahweh is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him. And I think we can we can we can all go further and read about that. But the point being here is that that Yah has come for all men, right? He's come not just now for Yasharel, but for all men that will seek him and all nations. And uh, this is the blessing. This is this is the real blessing of uh, what he's done for us. Um All right, so um, and Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam, and he smote Eth his hands together. And Balak said unto Balaam, I called you to curse my enemies, and behold, you have altogether blessed them, and these three times. So you know he's blessed them three times, but that that uh, that uh, sheet, if you will of unclean animals came down from heaven three times. But, but this is talking about another blessing. This is this is talking about what is to follow here. And Balaam said unto Balak, I spoke not also to you messages which you sent unto me, saying, If Balak would give me this house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the commandment of Yahweh to do either good or bad to my own mind. But what Yahweh says, that I will speak. Now, and now, behold, I go unto my people, come therefore, and I will advise what this people shall do to your people in the latter days. All right, that's interesting, in the latter days. And he took up his parable, and he said to Balaam, the son of Beor, the man whose eyes are open, and said, he has said, which heard the words of El, and knew the knowledge of El Elon, and saw the vision of El Shaddai falling, into a trance, but having his eyes open. I shall see him, but <clears throat> not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Yaakov, and a scepter shall rise out of Yasharel. And this is an interesting point, because who came out of Yasharel? Who is the star that came out of Yasharel? Who is the star that came out of Yaakov, sorry? And who is the scepter that rises out of Yasharel? Well, that's Yahusha, right? So the star that rises out of Yaakov is Yahusha when he was born as a man. The scepter rises out of Yasharel. Well, when he comes again, he has a scepter. And he rules with a rod of iron. So he has, he has the Messiah in the fullness, right? When he comes again. This is not, 
this is not a um, <clears throat> this is not a uh, well he is obviously gracious and and he's obviously long suffering but when he comes for the second time the time is up the time is done this is the uh, the urgency if you will of the Kodashim that we get ourselves and those that are with us, journeying with us, ready for this season. And it, and it shall smite the corners of Moab and destroy all the children of Seth. And Edom shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies. And Yasharel to, shall do valiantly. Right? The point is that when is the time that we rise up. When is the time that Yah gives us the strength to rise up, to say the things that have to happen, and that these things start becoming real, and that they that we have power, power. Uh, in other words, the visible power of the Kodashim in the world. I think that that is a time that's coming shortly. Not that we don't have power. I'm not saying. Obviously, we do have power by the Ruach, but we're talking about miracle working power. We're talking about a different thing, the two witnesses kind of power. <clears throat> and out of Yaakov shall come he that shall have dominion, and shall destroy him that remains of the city. And when he looked, remember what it says in Revelation, it says that the, any that any, anyone who harms the two witnesses, they are killed by the fire that proceeds from their mouth. Uh, now, I'm not bringing any, any, any unrighteous judgment upon them. But there is a warning in that. There's a warning in that to do and to speak what Yah's word is saying. And I think that's what's coming through in this whole verse passage. And, and this is verse 20. And when he looked upon Amalek, and he took up his parable and he said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that that perish forever. Well, hallelujah to that. Because we know Amalek is the, is the child of the fallen. And he looked upon the Quinanim and took up his parable and he said, Strong is your dwelling place and you put your nest in a rock. Nevertheless, the Quini shall be wasted until Asher shall carry you away captive. And he took up his parable and he said, Alas, who shall live when El does this? And the ship shall come from the coast of Kittim and shall afflict Asher and shall afflict Eber and also shall perish forever. And Bileam rose up and he went and he returned to his place and Balak also went his way. And Yasharal abode in Shittim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifice of the Elohim, and the people did eat. And they bowed down there to their Elohim, and Yasharal joined himself unto Baal Preor. And the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Yasharal. And Yahweh said unto Moshe, Take all the heads of the children of the people, hang them up before Yahweh against the sun that the fierce anger of Yahweh may be turned away from Yasharal. And Moshe said unto the judges of Yasharal, Slay ye every one his men that were joined unto Baal And behold, one of the children of Yasharal came and brought to him his brethren and the Midianite women in the sight of Moshe and the sight of all the assembly of the children of Yasharal who were weeping before the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And when Peniachek, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the assembly and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Yasharel into the tent and thrust at the both of them through, at the man of Yasharel and the woman through their belly. So the plague was stayed from the children of Yasharel, and those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. Amen. And that is the reading from Numbers today. And with that,
Um, David uh, or anybody else, you got something to add? Well, I like that uh, portion that uh, we're talking about in Micah. Yes. Uh, it, uh, I uh, take a second to get to it. I think it's Micah 5, isn't it? Yes, Micah 5. Micah 5. Seven through uh, seven to six uh, nine. Is that right? Yeah, uh, seven to six eight. Six eight. Yeah. All right. Let, let's read that. Let's read that. And the remnant of Yaakov shall be among the other nations in the midst of many people, as a lion amongst the 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 beasts of the forest, and a young lion amongst the flocks of the sheep. Who, if he go through both threads down and tears in pieces, and none can deliver. Your hand shall be lifted up on your adversaries, and your enemies shall be cut off. And it shall come to pass in that day, says Yahweh, that I will cut off your horses out of the midst of you, and shall I will destroy your chariots, and I will cut off the cities of your land, and throw down all your strongholds, and I will cut off witchcrafts, out of your hand, and you shall have no more soothsayers. Your graven images also will I cut off, your standing images out of the midst of you, and you shall no more worship the work of your hands, and I will pluck up your astral poles out of the midst of you, and I will destroy your cities, and I will execute vengeance in anger and fury upon it the heathen, such as they have not heard. <clears throat> to me, this is very interesting because it says your graven images, right? And we were talking about the graven images, um, you know, in, 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 the, in the image that's hanging on, on, uh, on the cross, um, which, which people bow down to and pray. And I see, Lois, Lois you got your hand up. Uh, please continue and tell us something. Well, first, good morning. Sorry, I was late. I just glad you yeah. No, it, it's it's you off because I hesitated. Uh, you made a comment quite a while, and I said, "Been praying," and I said, "Yeah, I want to know if there's a confirmation." And you have circled right back to it with images. So, what I would like you made a statement after you had been talking about Jesus on the cross hanging in some churches. I have never been in a Christian church that I would call a Christian church with Jesus on the cross, never. I've been in Catholic churches, but I don't consider them Christian churches. So that's yeah. just my view, because uh, Catholicism and Christianity were separated in Canada for many, many years. You, you went to the private school, we went to the Catholic, or you went to the public school, which was the Christian. So what you said was, you said a statement, something like this, that the cross was just some small thing and you know, Chris, I can't buy that, that the cross was just some small thing. It's the thing. It is, without the cross, we have no gospel. Without Yeshua coming and dying and paying the price for our sin, the cross is the focus of the gospel. Is it mm -hmm. not? Am I wrong? No. I think you are right in the, in, in the fact that it is um, the the event, the event, right? Because uh, was it a cross, for instance? I mean, that's just a question, okay? Um, I I personally uh, don't mind the image of a cross, uh, but it could have been a sarah, a, 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 a pole, you know, a vertical pole. That's 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 one thing, right? So yes, the cross is definitely his story. Okay, so it's history. It's 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 the one event in history that alters the whole world. It changes the whole uh, the the whole continuum of time. 
is changed by that event. So yes, in in that event is completely um, the biggest m miracle, if you will, uh, of of life, and 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 which is the doorway in belief to eternal life. So if it came through as it was a small thing, no, that's not ex that's not what I mean. So I, I, I forgive me for for even uttering that uh, in that vein, in that manner. That's not uh, what I meant at all. Um, Good, because the, I thought if people listen to this and they think that's what we think, yeah. I mean, I don't care what word you use for the implement with which he died on. I don't care what word you use. I don't think we should make that a technical debate of what, you know, if it was a two foot by six foot or, you know, I, 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 I just think it's irrelevant. It is, he died on a something that was up and down and had some crossbars because his hands were nailed to it. So well, it, uh, yeah, it I mean, whatever it was, let's just call it a cross. I don't mind calling it a cross. I really don't. I don't um, You know, that, that's not, that's not the issue. Um, um, but that's really important that we clarify our position that the cross is vital. It is vital oh, to what we believe. Uh, yeah, at least it's vital I, to me. It, it's I, vital. I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry if, if I said that that's a little point. Uh, that's not what I meant. The point is what uh, the little point that I meant, if, if, if I could take it in that context of of we were talking about the, the brazen image on the pole, right? That was not supposed to be a institution where people can go to and, uh, and that becomes a man's a religion or that becomes a man-made image of mm -hmm. a doctrine, if you will, which now allows you to go back to, um, to habit, or to forming a, a, uh, a, how can I say, a, a habit forming kind of uh, doctrine, which you, which you, which you fall back on. And, and that's, that's what I meant by the, the brazen serpent. Um, the, the, the banner, which is meant to perish, perishes. It's gone. So in other words, you cannot worship that thing after a year or two because it's 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 in, in in tatters. So it doesn't matter. But the brazen image is something there that stays for many many hundreds of years until somebody destroys it, like Hezekiah. And um, I think that was the point. Now it's the same thing with Yahusha on the cross. We uh, and you were talking about the Catholic Church. I was I was meaning the Catholic Church. Because a lot in the Catholic Church are Christian, or they think that they are Christian, and they many of them do believe in the Bible and read the Bible, and um, and they will uh, love the Word, and they understand that this Word is Yahusha. So you have many people who yet might be deceived in what they are, uh, what they believe by the. The, the senior people um, but uh, because I mean we know uh, the audience wall of the Pope for example there's a serpent there it's a serpent and we know things like that uh, that ball uh, that that uh, that that all these other gods were brought in because it was a monotheistic religion so it, it, there were many, there were many gods in this religion before uh, Constantine included uh, the belief in, uh, in, in Yahusha, if you will, right? But, but obviously under Jesus, right? So, yes, there are, you know, and, and, and listen, this doesn't extend only to the Catholics because the Protestants are under the Catholic Church right now and they are bowing down to the Pope. So this is now, an, you know, it's become once again a full circle of this, uh, how can I say, deception, if you will, right? 
So I, I don't know if I that think, explains better. I think it's a mistake to say Protestants in a broad form. There are traitors. We are told that there are pastors that will come in that are wolves. And they are leading Protestant churches, but they're leading them astray. We've been told that. I just think it's a... Well, I hate to attack my brother. I just... That would be like me saying all Hebrew roots people believe Judaism. But that's just not a true statement. I cannot continue to say your Judaism. I, I, that would be a lie. And so I really feel we need to really, if we parse our words over the structure or the shape of the cross, let's parse our words over what a Christian means, which is vital because it is very offensive to Christians who love Yah the same way we do. Call him Jesus. Okay. Use the Sunday. Okay. I'm sorry they don't have the 100% truth there, but as far as there's only one way of salvation and it's the cross and it is the man who died on it and his father is the creator, those those elements remain the same. So that's just me. Uh, forgive me, but I'll they use David's line. Forgive me, but I, I just really feel we need to watch how we phrase words because it's so important. And there are false teachers. I see them all over and I just go click when I click on them. If they've turned false, I just shut them off. But there yeah. are a lot of really good teachers, a lot of really yeah. good teachers that are even teaching. Just for example, my brother in Mexico, who's just a, you know, an average Joe went down there. He teaches about uh, about um, the Torah and he teaches about um, uh, like uh, Passover. And he teaches that, but he still has a Sunday and he still calls the jesus i mean he does but for me to say that he teaches that the cross some that we should bow to even a cross that has no jesus on it when we were christian bikers we used to say he's off the cross put the cross away stop that you people we'd so we would say to the christians we'd say he's not on the cross anymore He's gone. The cross is finished. It, the work of the cross is what we're under now. So, yeah. anyways, I and I think, and I, and I think that's reiterating exactly what I was saying and what right. I was meaning. Okay, is that that the cross is not the symbol, right? I mean, you you cannot. And I understand that uh, that a you know here I go again. But anyway, I'm going to say it anyway. The 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 cross is a symbol of um, our belief system in the world, if you will, right? You will see a cross yes. and you say, okay, well, these people believe in the son of Yah that was crucified there or thereupon. But it doesn't mean that he's crucified on that specific state. It means that we believe in the event that he was crucified and therefore we um we that that is the that is the belief system upon we base our belief right that he was that he died for our sins that he died to bring this rest, restitution to uh to his creation uh by him being the sacrifice and i think um you know that's the so in other words when uh, when when we were talking about um uh the the brazen serpent um this is this is something that they started worshiping and that is incorrect so very we much not, we do not even worship the cross or we or anything else that is that is uh that is related to that. We worship the Yah that died on the cross that is now at the right hand of, Yah, of, 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 of Yahweh in heaven. And his name happens to be Yahusha. So I think that's important to understand. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Louis. Uh, David? Uh, Shalom. I... Uh... In Micah, uh, I'm going to read a couple of verses. In Micah, it talks about uh, in five. It says, "I will pluck." Uh, let's see. I'm going to say in thirteen. It says, "Your graven images also will I cut off, 
and your standing images out of the midst of you, and you shall no more worship the works of your hands, and I will pluck up your Asher, Asher poles out of the midst of you, so I will destroy your cities. It goes on. Yeah. Now, when they met, when, when uh, the image of the serpent, they began to worship it, so they had to get rid of it because they were worshiping it. They called it Hushtan, and they got rid of it. Well, because they were worshiping it. I see that as reflected in the worship of the image of the body of Messiah hanging on the cross still. He's not. The big thing is he's not on it anymore. He paid the price. You don't have to pay it again. Now, to try to make him pay it again would be striking the rock twice, wouldn't it? Now, yep. it, the issue is, is that if they had to get rid of Hushtan because they were worshiping it, I see that's one of the images that was hindering the people. Mm -hmm. Now, now then, then that Asher poles and other things that uh, are images that are horrible. Also, also, there's things that are unclean that I haven't had in my mouth for 20 years, over 20 years, and it took a lot to get it out of my mouth. And I'm not going to put it back in. And I'm warning everybody to not use anything that is replacements. All those replacements are going to be judged. They're not going to make it into the Shammai, into the kingdom. Amen. That they Amen. are vain. It's vain, and it's been, and it's going to be judged. And the whole camp of uh, the northern tribes that are captive in all these assemblies called churches are in captivity to this day. It says, it says that they, and and they're they're still doing what they did when they got divorced. They're worshiping by Al God. Now, mm -hmm. you know, you know, David. It says he will tolerate no other before him, no other. No matter what they try to set up, no matter what the devil tries to set up for these people to worship, Yah says, I will tolerate no other before me. I sure think that's true. I'm not not think I know that's true. Yeah. And that's going to be the judgment of his house. And one of the things is you can't. I'm going to say it again. You can't give a place to the devil and call it love. Amen. Because Amen. It's, it's not. And, and, and uh, there's lots of deception going on there that has allowed things that are unclean in his house. Now, the whole thing about there's uh, men of old that have crept into your midst, they're not, they're not in flesh and blood. There are men of old that have crept into the midst of the assembly. And if they're not found out, they're going to pollute it. They're going to turn the whole thing into a, an unclean thing because that's what they do. Yep. We don't have to let well, them do that. You know, we don't let's, have to let them do let's, that. Let's think about this now, David. You know, we have we have churches. We call them churches. We call them buildings. Most of the old ones have steeples. Right. It's all idolatry. Have, right. So, you know, this is what I'm getting at. This is this is what I'm saying, right? We have, uh, first of all, it never says come. It says go. Go into the world. It doesn't say you must build now a big, big building for people to come worship. And then when, when the government decides that you're not allowed to worship in your building because there's some kind of a disease, then, um, then the whole building is is desolate and people sit at home and they don't worship anymore, right? Because that's the way they learn to worship is in, in a crowd, in, in a, in a building. And, and uh, they, they, they do not have the ability to pray with their, with their families, right? So, so what have you done? You've created a bunch of people who have no tools of their own to do what they're supposed to be doing. And that's not what, what we're about. That's not what we should be about. We should be seeking the truth out of the word of Yah. And that's all, you know.
So um, okay, that's one. That's one thing. Um, the the so so the work of your hands. Well, I mean, you know, what isn't the work of humans' hands in this world that we're living in? That we not that that we taking so much effort to 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 be in. You know, it's it's like everything that we're doing and that we're saying, and that we're living for and that we're paying for every month and we are basically bought we are in this roped into this uh, into this into this prison of of uh, of a working society because we have to have things well this is part of the world system so you know if we really want to be out of it well we've got to get out of it and and i mean uh, uh, that's just, it's just a thought, right? I'm not saying one mustn't have a job and mustn't work. For sure you must. And, but, but um, to, be, to be under this, under this financial system is also just worship of the system because you're giving your life to everything that you're trying to pay off or that you're trying to attain. So that's another issue that we have in this world that we have to try and rid ourselves of. Otherwise, we're just under a system. May I, point, may I point out that he can rid us of it and show us the way to walk out of it. If uh, we set our face towards uh, being obedient to his Ruach. Now, one of the things that uh, serving money and not Yahuwah, you, can have to, you can't have two masters and people that are submitted to a contract, signed, sealed, contract with the world to serve them money mm. is in a bondage that has to be shown a way out of because there's going to there hopefully there's a jubilee for that but see the willingness to sign a contract to serve money is rejecting you says you, yeah. you should lend them lend and not borrow now i when that i was pressed to do that and I haven't borrowed money, boy. I'm talking about it being tempting, tempting. Lots of the world is full of temptations that you can have this. All you got to do is just make a contract with me. Yeah, yeah. I ain't doing it. I'm not. I haven't done it. I haven't done it, and I haven't done it, and I'm not in that bondage because I'm not going to serve that world. Now, if a person's in that bondage and in a contract to serve money and not Yahuwah, he's in a that's got an extreme problem on the whole thing on, on, on his walk. Now, like you said, you can't dust off a place for the devil and call it love. You just can't do it. And if you do do it, you're going to be reproved for doing it because it's not the love of you above everything else. Now that's a, that's a warning that he keeps giving to us over and over and over and over again, because it's serious. It's real serious. Now I know that, the, the, that words that are worse than other words, the replacements of his name with a, a name that uh, exalts the darkness and not him is worse than unclean. It's, it's, it's deadly. And <clears throat> To give that a place and call it love, you're going to pay for that. Now, if that's not, if that's not acceptable, then I mean, I, I would get completely unacceptable in this, in this uh, assembly because I know it's not and I have it. I don't have it in my mouth and I'm going to sound the show for of a warning to whosoever allows it in their house because it'll defile their whole house. Okay, that's got to, well, that's it. I, all I want no. to say is what word is more is worse. If we call Yah God or Lord, which is Baal, or we call Yeshua Jesus. Which one is worse? To me, I, I'm sorry, but to me, I'm equally as offended at calling my creator, a pagan god, 
I, I, that just offends me. I mean, I can't do it in myself. I'm not offended if you call him God. You go ahead. That's up to you. But I don't ever want to call him God or Lord. I am taking that out of my mouth. And I've said it for 70 years. I'm not as offended about Jesus because that's a man-made word. I guess I still need to come under that conviction. I haven't made it there yet. But boy, those other two, when Dr. P taught us that, I'm like, what are we doing? We are still using those words that are totally wrong. And we're not just saying Yeshua, is, we have a bad, like, have a pagan name. We're giving it to both. And I'm like, but we don't ever speak about that. We only do the, the Yeshua name. Let's let's rant the other way too. That's me. Yeshua. Okay. All right. Uh, chapter six. Ye now what Yahweh says, arise and contend you before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear he, O mountains, and Yahweh's controversy, and he strong foundations of the earth. For Yahweh has a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Yasharel, O oh my people, what have I done unto you? And wherein have I wearied you? Testify against me, for I am brought you up out of the mount of Mitzrayim, and redeemed you out of the house of my servants. And I will send you before you eth Moshe and Aaron and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what Balak the king of Moab consulted, and Bilian the son of Beor answered him from Shittim unto Gidgal, that he may know the righteous way of Yahweh. Wherewith shall I come before Yahweh and bow myself down before his Elohim? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will Yahweh be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression and the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has showed you, O man, what is good and what Yahweh requires of you, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your Elohim. Yahweh's voice cries unto the city, and the man of wisdom shall see your name. Hear he the rod who has appointed it. Right, so there we go. Man of the wisdom. The rod, he said the rod now. He didn't say he, it, this is going to be really friendly. It's yep. going to be a rod. Well, it, when it, he comes, it, when, I think you know. Let's let's recap what we what we said there in in that in that part, David. When he comes again, this is not going to be fun for a lot of people. And um, the rod that he comes with is a rod of iron. So, you know. Uh, it's interesting that it says here, the voice of the voice, Yahweh's voice cries to the city and the man of wisdom shall see your name. Hear he the rod and who has appointed. It. Well, there he's talking about two, right? the one who comes and the one who is, but they are one. The word of Yahuwah has become wisdom unto us. The Yahusha has become wisdom unto us. He's Amen. the door. He's the door to that wisdom that eliminates the other stuff that's not uh, uh, acceptable. Amen. If, and, 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 and it's now. It's not. He's come again. He's going to come again, and he's going to he's going to exact that all over the earth. But the ones that believe to be his set apart called out ones Amen. we're seated with him. we're seated with him in in the shoma in heavenly places now now and as he is so are we now now that's not uh off somewhere in the distance that has to be believed and if it's not believed then it 
then it's unbelief. But so we have to realize that the uh, the the correction that he loves. He if he loves you, he's going to correct you. Mm-hmm. Now th- that done, sometimes that comes hard. And if you if you see the all these that fell and all these are demonstrations of that and Moshe and Aaron and Miriam falling in falling in the wilderness and not crossing over into the promised land. Mm-hmm. And then and it, there's a real heavy duty deal there because there he's talking about the wilderness that we're in now. And we're gonna and talking about for us overcoming for all those that overcome. Well, that's not going to be a, a picnic. That's not going to be oh la di da di da di da. No, it's going to be some pretty hot, uh, pretty uh, things that change us. We can't stay the same. We're going to be changed into who, into who He's called us to be. That's not staying the same. And so, some of the things that have happened to me have not been pleasant at all because sometimes that circumcision of the flesh kind of thing and eliminating things that aren't of him was not something I was just real ready for. But as I'm, as I submitted to it, easily led quick to repent became my confession. It was a whole lot easier to repent because I know he loves me when he corrects me. If that doesn't happen, if we can't bring uh, instruction and correction, then then what are we doing? Mm. We're not sounding the warning to each other. And we need to, because there's something that has crept into our midst that we were warned about last Shabbat, that's in the midst of the assembly that he's talking about is the real enemy and he says he's given us the dominion over that, and their damnation lingers not. Well, cool. That means they can get gone because it's not lingering. And that judgment has to come from the Ruach Hagavua to have that revealed to us, to execute that judgment written that belongs to all the called out ones. Now, that practice is something that needs to be performed all the time I have found, I have found I get attacked in my daily walk and I have to take thoughts captive and cast down imaginations and war against the things that try to overcome this member daily. <clears throat> and I do it according to what he said. I take authority over it and cast those images down and acknowledge him in all my ways so he can make my path straight. What does that mean? That means the straight gate and the narrow way. That's mean, that means that's the way he's going. When he does that, it falls into place because he does it, not me. I've acknowledged him and he does it every day. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, you know, David, I think, uh, I think the most important thing, well, one of the most important things is that we show the love of Yah to the rest of the world. Now, at that stage, they can or cannot believe in the name of Yahweh. They can or cannot believe in the son, Yahusha. Um, but the point is that the love of Yah extends to all. And and that is that that is uh, that overcomes right? it overcomes evil. And I think that's important for us to get across that Yah overcomes evil, and us in Him can overcome evil in our lives. Now, the judgment of these entities that give us all sorts of abominations. That's for Yah to realize. He will do that. Now, um, yes, in the end, we have uh, the ability to judge. But right now, we have the ability to love. And sometimes to love is not very easy. You know, it's, 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 
it's very easy to tell people um, to get off the bus at a certain stage instead of saying, well, no, let me walk with you a mile. Let me walk with you two miles. Now, that's an act of yeah. That's not an act of my own flesh. That's for sure. Perfect love covers a multitude of sins. That's, that's, that's definitely true. But it doesn't give place to the devil to continue to uh, pollute the house because the house, your oil will not allow to be continued to be polluted. He'll judge whoever's let that happen. Yeah. And the issue is, is that it's not our ability to begin with. If, we, if it was in our ability to do anything that is the power of Yahuwah to heal, to, uh, uh, to do this or do that, then we could take this, some of the steam, huh? But we can't, you know. And just like anything else like that's happened to me, I, there, it, there's no way that I could take the, a credit for it. And I, I press into that as a member of the, uh, of the redeemed and set apart because I know that I can't do it. And I know that only his anointing can do it. Only his anointing breaks the yoke. Mm. And I, I've, I've had uh, people I've witnessed to reject it and die, sadly die uh, because of it. And I've asked, I've talked to Father about that. I said, Father, I didn't want to witness to them and that, and them denying it killed them. It made me a whole lot more concerned for them. And I warn, I warn people about it. I warn people about it every time I witness, and I try to, I try to be aware of being his witness in season, and out of season, every day. And I said, I'm going to tell you right now that what you're hearing now, I won't tell you the warning about it. And because I don't want it to kill you. If you get into some ego mindset that you're going to start telling me what it is. Now, when they fall dead because of it, or if they get attacked and it's just un almost unto death, and then you can intercede for them and cover them. And it stops that death. Hallelujah. Oh, that's awesome. I've experienced Amen. that because of the anointing. Amen. But for, for us not to reprove the darkness in our midst, in the face of one another, and even privately, if we have something uh, privately with, against one another. But did you know that authority has to be reproved openly? And there's a reason for that. If someone in authority that needs to have reproof, you don't go to them privately. You go to them in public, and that's not easy. It's really harder. Now, that's also love. Shabbat shalom. Yeah, amen. And I think, you know, that's that's one thing that's that we've got to be very careful with. Uh, you know, we cannot, we cannot uh, um, show people up because we've got to We've got a point to prove. We've got to love people and we've got to cover sin. We cannot just say, well, you know what, you're wrong, and I've got to I've got to show up your sin. That's that's not Yah's way, right? I mean, I cover, I tr well, what we have to try and do, put it this way, is cover our sin. In, so with a wife and a husband, you're supposed to be covering your sin. You're supposed to be shielding one another from public. Now, now, if they, if nobody wants to listen, well, then it's a different story, like the word says, right? You don't want to listen. Well, well then we take you to the elders. Then we get other people involved, and that's the way, and that's the continuum of uh, coming to. Um, how can I say? But but you know I, I, that's that's a point for we 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 know about that. We don't have to go. This is just a, just a continuation of what you were saying. May I say this? Yeah. It says the cares of this world choke out the word. And so when uh, the casual things, uh, be careful or be uh, you know. Uh, 
don't, you know, you need to take care, take care. Well, what kind of cares are you talking about? Now, see, the cares of this world choke out the word. So we can take heed, but as far as the word care, I have that, I don't see that crossing the boundaries of allowing it to run into this or run into that. The cares of this world choke out the word. So I resist the cares of this world because it will choke out the word. Now, that's a big deal to me and has been for over 20 years. There's words that have crept in that allowed that people say, oh, take care. No, 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 I don't take care at all. I don't take any of that care because the cares of this world choke out the word. Now, you may think that's cutting it a little thin, but I guarantee you the world will magnify it. And uh, uh, and, and, and it's what it's doing is just here, take this care or here, take that care and be careful for, be careful. No, 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 don't be careful. Roll all your cares upon you. Oh, uh, his burden is light. Yeah. See, that's a big deal because once that, we're in the world but we're not of it then it's no longer i that lives but messiah that lives in me so that sets us apart from a whole lot of things that the world cares about amen look uh, i've got message here we've got to cover we've got to we've got to cut the message we've got to cut the meeting uh david would you like to end us off in the, in the prayer please i'll say quickly with uh, respect what, what did you ask, Chris? I say, would you like to end this off in a prayer? Um, sure, it's just sure. that our, We've gone over our time. We need to end it. Okay. I'll be, uh, you know, we thank you for this Shabbat, uh, show, uh, this gathering, Shabbat gathering with uh, all of these members that uh, we set ourselves to love one another in, in, in spirit and in truth, uh, to be guided by you in all things and to love one another as you say, love one another. But no... Teach us to not give place to the devil. Teach us to have the discernment of anything that has crept into our midst that uh, we didn't discern before, that it's not you. It's unclean, and we need to get rid of it. And for us to exact your judgment in your ruach, in your, in your ruach, in your guidance, so that, we, so that we're clearly cleansed of that. We just ask for that, that greater discernment of good and evil in our midst so that we are more presentable and and are able to are able to present ourselves as examples of the new man in Yahushua HaMashiach. We thank you for this opportunity in Yahushua's name. Amen, amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much, David. Blessings to you, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. See you next week. Thank you. Shabbat shalom. Thank you.